Hey guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this series, we are going to cover concepts and questions from tree data structure. So please like the video and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss any update. In the last video, we learned about generic trees or nary tree. Today, we will learn about threaded binary tree, its types, advantages, disadvantages, structure and in order traversal of a threaded binary tree. So, let's get started. Before moving to threaded binary tree, let's see why this came into picture. For that, we need to understand the issues with binary tree. This is a normal binary tree with a node that has a value, a left pointer and a right pointer. Here we see that the marked pointers are null. These pointers get wasted as we do not store any value in it. For this tree, we have 8 nodes and 9 null pointers. Thus, about n plus 1 pointers are null in a binary tree. Apart from this, we need a large storage space to keep the stack and queue that are used for traversal. So, to mitigate this, we have threaded binary tree, wherein we store meaningful information in these null pointers such that it avoids the use of stack and queue. Now, the question is, what can this information be? It is nothing but predecessor and the successor information for the traversal. The left null pointer stores the pointer to the predecessor and the right null pointer stores the pointer to the successor. Depending on these, we have two types of threaded binary tree. A single threaded that has either the predecessor or the successor information and a double threaded that has both. For this tree shown here, the in-order traversal is as shown. And the highlighted nodes have either one or two null pointers. So, for these nodes, we will create a thread or a link of left null pointers to in-order predecessor and that of the right to in-order successor. So, this becomes our threaded binary tree. For the first node, that is node 19, we do not have a predecessor. So the left node is currently pointing to null and same with the successor for node 2. Instead of pointing it to null, we can create a dummy node and point these nodes to the dummy node. In the dummy node, the left pointer points to the root of the tree and the right pointer points to itself. In this type of linking, we will also need to maintain the data about what the pointer holds. Is it the child or the predecessor successor? So, the structure of node looks like this. It will have a value, a right pointer, a left pointer and two boolean variables. These boolean variables will hold the data about whether the pointer holds the predecessor or the successor. If yes, the value in these will be true, otherwise false. Let's take the single threaded tree where we have successor information for the in-order traversal. We have created a dummy node here with the value as minus 1. The value here needs to be distinguishing so that we will know if we have circled back to the dummy node after traversal or not. The steps we will follow for an iterative traversal over here are as given. We initialize a variable current with the leftmost node of the root or dummy node. Then we start a loop. We loop while the current node is not null and it is not the dummy node. If so, we process the node and update the current node. To update it, we check if the current node has thread. If so, we follow the thread and set the current as current.right. Otherwise, there is a right node. So we set the current as leftmost node of current.right. Once the loop is terminated, we will have our in-order traversal. Here we can see that we did not use stack or recursion stack or queue. That is why this kind of traversal is also known as stackless or queueless traversal. The threaded traversal is also famous with the name of Morris traversal. Let's try the dry run of it on this tree. We will start with the root node or the dummy node and initialize current as leftmost child of the dummy node. So the current becomes 15. Now we start the loop. We will process the node and update the current to its right as it has a thread. So current becomes node 8. Now we again process the node and update current. Here, as there is a right node and no thread, current becomes leftmost node of current.right, which makes current as 7. Again, we process this node and update the current. We repeat this till we reach the dummy node.
Now that the current is pointing to dummy, the looping condition fails and we come out of the loop. This becomes our in order traversal. But there are a few drawbacks of this algorithm. With the addition of threads, the algorithm for tree traversal becomes complex. Also, there is extra space needed for storing the Boolean values. And the insertion and deletion operation becomes difficult as we need to add and delete the appropriate threads also. So, threaded binary trees can be used when there are more of traversal operation and less of insertion and deletion operations in a tree. And in cases where the stack space is limited as these do not require stack. Here is the tree node class. It has one more additional attribute for right thread. Rest is the same as we have been seeing throughout the course. Here is the main class. In this, we have a main method that creates a tree. This is the part that creates the parent-child association. And here is the part that creates the predecessor-successor relationship. This is the method that gives the non-null leftmost child for a node. It loops while the left is not null and returns the node. Here is the in-order traversal method. In this, we first go to the leftmost node of the dummy and then loop while the node is not null and is not equal to the dummy node. As in our example, the dummy node has value minus 1, so we have same condition for checking if it is not a dummy node. After that, we just process the node by printing it and update the current based on whether its right is a child or a thread. If we run this code, we will get this as an output. That's it for today. In the next video, we will learn about binary search tree. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so so that you get regular updates on the videos we post. See you in the next one. Till then, keep learning.